Good evening, folks. Welcome to trailer video number 18. In this video, I'm going to release how ethereal mechanics computes the magnetic moment of leptons, and leptons being electrons, tau particles, and muons. And the reason why I'm doing this now is because this article came forward about the muon G2 ring at Fermi National Laboratory, and this article is getting all kinds of hype, and they're publishing all kinds of wacky nonsense in this about this experiment that has nothing to do with this experiment. So let me first go in through the wackiness of this release and then we'll go and show you the same simple ways to compute the magnetic moment using ethereal mechanics. It is so simple even a physicist can do it. Okay so they go down and they they talk about really exotic things like uh, the, these beauty court crashes and results and researchers data is neither experiment official discovery yet because there's still a tiny sense of statistical quirks. All they're coming up with is a fudge factor to a fudge factor. Okay, it is a fudge factor. Okay, they in their equations, and I'm going to show you, they have this factor called G. G has the value 2. But it's not perfectly two. It's like 2.0000 something, something, something. That little 000 something, 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 something is what they're trying to quantify. Okay? And that's all they're doing is quantifying that anomaly. It doesn't mean there's all these fantastic things. They start getting into things about um, where is the thing about uh, oh head scratching and where is it now? The rule book, or we think we might be swimming in a sea of background particles all the time that just haven't been recently discovered. So what they're saying is it might have discovered pre uh, ethons. See, I believe all of physics has a sea of particles called ethons. But you don't need to just talk about ethons for this stuff at all. You can calculate this stuff. Hold on, my cat is trying to get up. Come on, get out. Okay, you don't need that. Okay, and we'll talk about how you, and so what they're saying is these little anomalies, this anomaly that's added to the factor two is not what they expect it to be and they're coming up with all of this uh, jibber jabber to try to explain it. Okay, and but anyway, you can see how bad the physics are because when we get bad with all this, this highfalutin gibberish, they come right to the bottom and it said, we're kind of confident, but you never know. So that's how we're doing physics today. We're kind of confident, but you never know. Well, if that's how we're doing physics today, then I'm going to show you something that I'm kind of confident about, but you'll never know. Now let's get into that. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate how ethereal mechanics comes up with the um, mutual, uh, I'm sorry, the magnetic moment of these three particles. And in, just so you know, in ethereal mechanics, these particles are the same particle at different energy states. They think these three particles are three separately different systems. They're not. And I'm going to show you using the same model of matter for all three of them, we can get extremely accurate results for the magnetic moments of these particles. I have never released this to anybody right now, and this will be the first time I'm releasing this information. Because I'm just getting just totally beside myself with this. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see a good video that it describes, uh, go to the... I'm going to put this this PBS Space Time uh, G2 results. That's the better video. Don't go to the Fermilab one. I, I went through this one. This thing is... It's horribly written. It doesn't explain half of the graphs they show you. Okay, so let's go to the derivation right now. In this section, we're going to derive the magnetic moment of a lepton using ethereal mechanics equations. And in ethereal mechanics, a lepton, whether it's a tau, a mu, or an electron, is modeled using inertialist charges that spin about each other at the speed of light. And the radius of rotation, we're going to call this little re. Again, it's the same system 
for a tau, a muon, and an electron, all leptons. Okay, so basically, if we go back to basic electrical engineering, the magnetic moment of such a system is equal to the current going around a ring times the area of the ring. Well, the area is easy. The area is just pi r squared. I know you physicists are going to have a conniption that this is so freaking easy that even you can do it. Okay, the current. Let's just look at the current from one charge. There's two charges. We're just going to look at the current from one charge because I'm going to make a point here. Okay, the current from one single charge is the charge divided by the time it takes to make a orbit, a single orbit. And because it's going at the speed of light, yes, these, these protons, these aren't Coulomb charges, these are protons. There's a correlation between Coulomb charges and protons. We'll get into that later. But right now, there's two protons in a lepton. Okay, so the charge of one proton, and they're inertialist, so there's no problem. And in this system, this system is derived, if you go to my foundation series, I go to this system in great detail and show you how you can derive even the mass. And we're going to show you how to derive the mass of all these particles using, or the, the radius of these particles using their mass. Okay, but anyway, getting back to the magnetic moment. So it's the charge divided by the period, and the period is equal to the circumference, which is 2 pi r e, let's put a little e there, divided by the speed of light. And that's the period for one rotation. So if I put these together, the mu is equal to the current, which is I divided, or q divided by t, which is q divided by 2 pi R e, you can put the c in the top, times area, which is pi r e squared. And we reduce this and we have mu is equal to q c r e over 2. And this looks very much like what they get for particle magnetic moments. Okay, but they have to come up with a fudge factor to get theirs to work. And the fudge factor they put in theirs is a letter called G. I'm not going to write it in because I don't want to mess with mine. G. And their G for leptons is approximately 2. Now for ethereal mechanics, we have to put a 2 in there because we got two charges, not one. So that's why we have a 2 there. So mu is equal to 2 times this, which is Q C R E. So we know what the Q is, we know what the C is, but what's the little R E? Well, we can go to ethereal mechanics to compute the a little R E of these systems based on their mass. See, in ethereal mechanics, this second order system of protons, that's, that's what this is called, it's a second order system of protons. It's a second order system, and they have an inertia. Okay, based on their separation distance between the two protons. We're going to use R without a little e. This is radial distance. I should probably use D not to be confusing, but we'll fix it. And so what ethereal mechanics tells us the new electromagnetism is the force on a target proton from a source proton is equal to Km, the charge of the source, the charge of the target, times the acceleration of the source divided by the radial distance between them magnitude. Oh, it's actually negative. So as this charge accelerates, it's going to put a reactionary force equal and opposite, well, not equal, but proportional to this in the opposite direction. Okay, so if you actually look at this equation here, and this is in my foundation series, so if you want to go over it in more detail, you can go over it there. This is F equals minus MA. This is your mass. This is kilograms. And it shows that inertia in matter is not an intrinsic quality. It's mutable. And because it's mutable, they're screwing up their very magnetic moment measurements, and we'll cover that in a moment. Okay, but now what we also have to do is, this is just 
one of these is just the force of one acting on the other, we have to get the, for the total kilograms of the system, we have to get this one acting on this one. So we just multiply this by two. And so our effective kilograms, electrical inertia of our system is two times km qs qt divided by the radial distance between the two. But because we're modeling this system as little re, where r is equal to two little re, we can substitute that and then we have the kilograms of the system is just km q squared over little re. Oh, just drop something. Okay, so now what we can do, we can now compute little re from the published masses of the particle, the, the inertia. I don't like calling them masses because mass is the quantity of something. And we have to disambiguate quantity from inertia just like they disambiguated weight from mass. We have to disambiguate inertia from mass. We have to do that. We have to go that way. I have all kinds of videos on that. So anyway, this is inertia in kilograms, and we're going to solve for little re. This is child's play, but it took me a long time to get here. Okay, so that's how we can compute the little re, and what we're going to do is substitute that into this. Okay, and that's going to give us our magnetic moment. Q cubed K M C over kilogram. I'm going to just double check with my notes to make sure I didn't screw up. Where's my stupid notes? Yep, that's right. Now, but now this is what I call the rest, the rest magnetic moment. Oh wait, we have to compensate. We're going to compensate by the anomaly. Okay, they published values for the anomaly. It's like A mu or mu A or whatever. We're going to do that first before I declare this. So mu rest is equal to Q cubed KMC over the kilograms times one plus the A mu. This is the anomaly. Every particle has published anomaly factors. It's a, just a fraction, but it makes the answers a little bit like theirs, so it's nice. It's nicey nice. But this is now, this is the rest. The rest magnetic moment. The rest magnetic moment. What do I mean by that? Well, the problem that physicists have is they, they look at these particles as hardened things that when it has its spin and when, you, when it goes and orients itself in a magnetic field that it keeps its shape. It doesn't. This is a system of pretons. And the magnetic field and the, the fields from one affect the other. And then if you put this system inside a big magnetic field, which is just another ring, damn it, another ring of current, and you put that little system inside, well, like moving currents attract, and you're basically going to stretch this system because it's going to first, it's going to orient such that its current is running parallel to the current in the generating magnetic field. But because light currents attract, you're going to stretch this. It's like if I took this guy here and I pulled it in all directions, I'd stretch him like a rubber band. That's what's happening to this system. And that's why the values you measure are going to be much larger than the actual rest system. Luckily, the physicists are doing it the same way all the time that, you know, hey, they had a fudge factor called G. Well, I'm going to put a fudge factor that compensates the rest magnetic moment for the methods that they're using for measuring. And that is a simple constant. You just take this guy and you multiply him by 6d8 times 5179-9703. You do that. You do all these computations and you will have the magnetic moment for the electron, the muon, and the tau particle good to six digits of precision. 
Now, we don't have real measured values for the tau. That's an interesting point, but there are estimates up there. Let's go to the spreadsheet. We're going to put this in and see how close we come to the published values. Oh, by the way, this is unit charge in Coulombs. This is magnetic constant. Km is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Q is your unit charge. Use, use the Coulomb unit charge. Kg is the published mass of the particle in kilograms. And A is the anomaly. You can go look them up. You'll see them in the spreadsheet. Let's go to the spreadsheet. One note, that equation I just showed you, that's for two particle systems. Okay, protons are made up of three second order systems of protons for a total of six charges. And so the factor for protons is going to be somewhere in the ballpark of six. It's not going to be exactly six because the six charges do not orbit in a perfect circle. What they are is two or three second order systems of protons that are coupled somehow and I haven't figured that out yet so it's not going to be six it's going to be some value less than six less than six uh, a published value fudge factor they use is 5.5 or 5.6 somewhere in that ballpark uh, we'll see what my number comes up with when I get to that point in ethereal mechanics back to the spreadsheet okay my friends this is the spreadsheet where we're going to show you how the computations came out what you see here on this spreadsheet, the name of this spreadsheet is Computing Magnetic Moments. This is a scientific constants spreadsheet that I use a lot. Um, I'm going to be giving this out to my Patreon first class passengers and above. On the first page of this Excel spreadsheet is just about every scientific constant that I use. And there's all these other particle studies and and Weber and all these and so on the last page is computing magnetic moments okay that's you know you're welcome my patreon folks go look at what I have going on on the other pages uh, on this page the lower part is blocked here because that's stuff for patreon folks only and uh, so what I have here is the first three I have the electron the muon and the tau particle this yellow here this is the published mass in kilograms from the internet and that's those come from page one these are linked to page one you can see right there it's from the constants page it's linked these are constants used in the calculations these are also linked from page one oh, except for that one that should be linked okay so if these values get updated on page one they'll be updated here so if the values on the main page are out of date just correct them here I think these are the most up-to-date ones I just refreshed all the values in this spreadsheet I think I did uh, this weekend. Okay, going through the calculation for R, that's the calculation for R. This is, and you notice this is the classical electron radius here. So this would be, if there were such a thing, I don't know if there are, but this would be the classical muon radius, and this would be the classical tau radius. Com but these are computed using ethereal mechanics. Okay, so now then we plug these into the computation for magnetic moment, which is the equation up here. Now, again, these are the rest magnetic moments. And then here's the anomaly, which are published. Okay, I got these off the web. These are also linked from the constants page. So now the ethereal mechanics rest magnetic moment are these guys. Now let me slide this thing over. Okay. Here is the constant. We're going to multiply this constant. This converts from the rest magnetic moment to the measuring magnetic moment. Because remember what I told you. When you measure it, you disturb it. And luckily, the physicists are doing it the same way for the electron and the muon. And hopefully, they'll do it again when they ever figure out how to measure it for the tau. So these are the ethereal mechanics predicted values for the magnetic moments of the three particles. These are the measured values that are published and as you can see we are accurate down to six decimal places and I'm assuming because everything being the same that this my published value here should be accurate to six decimal places as well. 
Now, the reason for this fudge factor is others. Okay, one of the things I have not reconciled in ethereal mechanics is what's the correlation between Coulomb charges and pretons. It's either going to be a factor of a half, one, two, or four. Haven't figured that out, but that's okay. That will only that may only change this by a factor of a half, one, two, or four. So but I'm saying this model is good enough. And I'm saying that these are valid values. Even if the model isn't completely ferreted out yet, I'm saying that it's good enough to give you good values for magnetic moment at this time. Okay, because if they can have a fudge factor, I can have a fudge factor. And when I get the model completely ferreted out, I'll be able to tell you, once I figure out how they measured it, how, because once you take this system of pretons and you start pushing it around at very high speeds, the system is going to change its rotational velocity, which changes its magnetic moment. Okay, its magnetic moment is relativistically variant, just as its mass is. Okay, that's why this is its rest mass, and therefore this is its rest magnetic moment. The minute you put it into one of these things where you're spinning it around at very high velocities, it's no longer going to have a rest mass, and therefore its magnetic moment's going to change. And also, because you're, exp ex you're exposing this to a very intense magnetic field, you're going to also change it again. So going at relativistic velocities is going to shrink your magnetic moment, but exposing it to an intense magnetic field is going to expand it. Okay, and this factor here is the combination of those plus maybe a fudge factor needed because I don't have the right preton charge to Coulomb charge worked out yet, but that's a minor detail. This is good stuff. And so there you go. And I, folks, if you want to see more stuff like this, I don't have a lot of time to do this. I'd like to hire people to make really good videos. Okay, it's only $5 a month for my the passenger level uh, uh, Patreon member, which you get to see all the videos. And eventually I make all this stuff public, but the Patreon folks get to see stuff sometimes as, as little as two weeks to as sometimes as much as six months before everybody else sees it. Okay, so if you want to be on the inside of this and see where I'm going, which is very different from where all these physicists are going, Okay, I'm going to show you, I showed you how easy it was to do this. There does not need to be the complexity these guys are working toward. The, th the rules of acquisition say a, a theory of everything has to be ridiculously simple. And they're going down this rabbit hole of intense complexity, which is completely unnecessary. So please, sign up to my Patreon site. Help me out, because if I can get enough uh, Patreon members that I can start hiring people to do great animations, if I can hire people to take care of, you know, making the videos and, 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 and doing the spreadsheets and doing all this other stuff, I can focus on the science because I got to do everything and I have limited time. I'm not getting this stuff done as quickly as I'd like. So please, your help would be greatly appreciated and we can push this thing faster. If you can, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, it's only $5 a month. I mean, how much do you pay for a porn site every month? What's $5 compared to what you pay for your favorite porn site? Come on, guys. Let's do this.